The other issue is the tires just spin everywhere. Look, this is just me trying to back up to the van on relatively flat ground. Granted, it's on a hillside, but I was backing from that direction to here. So the mower would have been, you know, more weight on this tire than that one. But I'm running into this all over the place. You can actually see tire tracks, tire tracks, tire tracks, tire tracks all up through there. Now, granted, my yard's a hillside, and my big full size tractor would not mow this yard with turf tires either. I had to switch them over to ag tires. And then once I did that, it was fine. But the battery powered motors have so much torque. Look, look at all the, all the way up through there. Tires just spin. Going up this little slight incline, it's maybe five or 10 degrees. Look, tires just spin. Tires just spin, tires just spin, tires just spin. Tires just spin, tires just spin. A lot of places like that uh, might work for like city folks and their perfectly flat manicured lawns, but will not work for us country folks that have to deal with whatever. So I am ordering, these are, uh, tires that have an air valve that means that i can replace them they're an 18 by 850 by 8 two tires with more aggressive traction is 170 dollars so this is going to be my solution 18858 a wrench and a socket and an extension that fits the lug nuts and although it's not the correct size I grabbed a 13 16 deep well socket six point and even though they're not 13 16 it is still because it's six point is going to work so I'm going to loosen the lug nuts up on both sides then jack the mower up with a uh, floor jack and then continue to remove the wheels after that, but right now I just want to get everything loosened up And now both sides are loose and I'm gonna get a floor jack and jack up the back of this now so once you got the lug nuts off, the tire just comes off just like that. Next thing you want to do is you're going to let all the air out of these tires. If you have a tool to remove the valve stem uh, core, that'll go really fast. If not, you're just going to have to press it in and hold it with your fingers. So I'm going to go grab another tool so I can let these air out of these tires. And then to swap out these tires, you're going to need, um, basically I use, it's actually a tool for concrete. I use that to like hit the tire with a hammer and bust the bead loose. And then I just use two screwdrivers and do it the old school way. Like you're changing a bicycle tire all the way around. And then same thing with the other side. And then I basically just lube the new tire up with some soap and water and put it back on. So you don't have to take these somewhere if you don't want to mess with it you could take it somewhere and they're going to charge you uh, in 2022 probably about seven billion dollars per tire to swap it out for you because everything's gotten expensive in 2022 but it's really easy to do it yourself and i'm going to show you how to do that i basically have a tire tool that has a valve stem remover on it i got a pretty beefy hammer Two great big long screwdrivers. These are used to pry with. And then I got this, which is some sort of a concrete chisel, if I remember correctly. I got this from um, Tractor Supply. 
in the tool department. And the reason why I use it is because it has a wider surface than what the screwdrivers has. And it'll break the bead on this tire without damaging the tire. So let's say that I put these new tires on and I don't like them. In a month, I can take them back out and reuse these same tires because they won't be damaged. But first thing we're going to do is remove the valve stem cap. Then take the core out of the valve stem make sure you don't lose any of this stuff because you got to reuse this There's what the core looks like. Now you can hear that it is now deflated or no more air is coming out. I'm looking to see that is not uh, seated on there too bad. I'm actually going to put the stem back in so I don't lose it and tighten it back down. By the way, Years ago, before I was really doing YouTube videos the way I do YouTube videos now, I did something very similar on my garden tractor where I swapped out turf tires for ag tires and I added washer fluid to them. I think it was four gallons of washer fluid per tire. That was back before 2022 when washer fluid was like 89 cents a gallon. Not like today where it's like $12.57 a gallon. So now I got that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and break the bead on this tire. Oh, there it went. See how that released all at once? That's what we want. See, when it releases on one side, it releases all the way around. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the other side. <clears throat> Same deal. Once it releases, releases all the way around. Now here's the fun where you basically have to take um, I'm probably gonna go in and I'm gonna get a spray bottle with some water and dish detergent in it because it'll make us go way easier. But basically I'm going to use the two long screwdrivers now to get the tire off the rim. So let me go get some water with dish soap in it and I'll be right back. Now I got my spray bottle with some uh, dish detergent and water in it. <clears throat> And I know you might be thinking like, oh no, does this not work? Wouldn't that suck? I know you're probably thinking like, well, if this is so easy, Ed, how come they're gonna charge me such a fortune to put to do this at a tire shop? And let me tell you why. You see that badge on their shirt that says ASE? That costs thousands of dollars to get that. And then you see that tool that they put the tire on and it has a thing that goes around and spins the tire right off in a few seconds. That probably costs ten or $15,000. And they have to pay for not only all that equipment and that training to learn how to do this, they also have to pay for the electric and their building and all that fun stuff. And they probably have to carry about a million dollars of liability insurance in case some dummy walks in there with two tractor tires and slips on a wet floor and busts their head open. So, but the other thing is too, I would not want to do this all day long manually. That machine they have, it costs, you know, 10 or $15,000, makes it where you can do that all day long and not wear yourself out. Where this way is gonna wear you out, even if you only have to do it once or twice a day. But if you wanna save, Dude, I don't know what they charge to change out tires now, about $1,000 a tire in 2022. I really don't know. 
I'm kind of guessing about thousand dollars a tire to have a tire change in 2022. Anyways, can you see how I'm doing this? I suck a screwdriver in and caught the lip of the tire, and then I'm just gonna pry back. Like you ever change a bicycle tire, this is how you did it. This is just a different size tire. If you never changed a bicycle tire before, mm, yeah, I don't know what to think about you. But this is what you do. You just go all the way around the tire now. Basically, screwdriver in, pry. Screwdriver in, pry. All the way around the tire until you have the whole entire tire out. Now, you might see something I just did where the tire kind of been a little difficult because getting them first few bites where it actually stays up over the tire can also be a little fun at times. I don't really have a trick for that. Sometimes if you go back and do it twice, it just automatically stays. Sometimes you might have to have three screwdrivers. I'm going to try to do it with just two screwdrivers. Because I'm a two screwdriver kind of guy. Eventually though, it'll pop up where it ain't going to fall back in here like now. And now you can probably get away with just one screwdriver. But I'm a two screwdriver kind of guy. So here we go. See? Once you get it halfway out, the other half just magically does it on its own. Now the second half's a little bit easier. Sometimes all you gotta do is just kind of push on one and pull on the other and it'll slide right off there. But this ain't gonna be one of them kind of tires. So we're gonna have to do the same thing. Screwdriver in, kind of hold it in place, work our way around with the other screwdriver. Eventually you'll get all the way around Easy peasy. I'll tell you what, it's probably worse trying to do this without blocking the camera. Like whose idea was it to record this for YouTube? Because I think it would have been much easier if I wouldn't have. I'm just gonna use force. Rah, just like that. I'm sure everybody knows this, but I want to point this out because if I don't, there's going to be somebody that's going to be like, oh, which way does this go? The valve stem always points out. That's how we know it's out. We don't care what way this tire come off. It probably has somewhere on here where it says direction and it's got an arrow, but I don't really think it matters too much with these turf tires. It does matter on the other tires. They actually say which way the direction is. So now let's go to these new tires. Watch this. Watch this camera trick. Boom. Right there. New tires. Now we're going to take a pocket knife, box cutter, whatever you got handy. Cut these nice packaging straps off of here. By the way, I got these tires off of Amazon. They were kind of expensive, but they had a whole lot weight rating than like your normal ATV tires had. ATV tires in this size are mostly a balloon tire where these are not a balloon tire. These had like 800 pounds per wheel, which means 1600 pounds between the two across the back end. And I was like, oh, those are the ones I want. Those are good quality. If they got this tread and that kind of weight, these are good quality. Not only that, they have a hot, much higher uh, PSI. These are rated for 22 PSI. And where's the load rating at? They are also made in the USA. They have the load rating on uh, Amazon, a really high load rating though. And so these actually say traction that way. So on a ag tire, if you look how they got this, if you look how it's got this V, that V 
points forward. So they'll sit on the mower just like this. Left side, right side. So now, knowing that, let me show you something. Make sure we're in frame, because we're probably not. All right, so there's how it sits on. There is our valve stem core. That means it goes like this. We're gonna put some soapy water on this. We're gonna lay us down flat, put some soapy water around this edge, shove that rim in there. So close yet so far away. Just like that. The other one usually goes a little bit, a little bit easier. Because this one, I can actually use the screwdrivers to help. The first one you just got to force on there. This one you can actually use the screwdrivers. Watch it prove me wrong, right? I tell you, these tires, they just don't really have a sidewall to them and that makes it just rough. Because normally what you would do, you'd collapse a tire then pull it in tight against the rim and then just work the rest of it in there. progress Boom. Just like that. Now, go put some air in it. This one's ready to put back on. I figured I'd better show you about this pop. So you take this valve stem seal off, and when you fill this up with air, you have to initially overfill it slightly. The tire will literally pop, it may bounce, it may jump. You might think it's gonna explode, but it don't.
oil and right now it's at 22 psi when i put more air in that it's going to pop when it actually releases and goes in there i don't know if you'll be able to see it or not let me see if i can get this camera where you can actually see it if the camera was up higher it'd be plain as day So one side did, but we still ain't got to that one yet. There it comes. See that? Then you check both sides to make sure it's sealed all the way around, and it is. And then you put your final pressure in, which this is probably overfilled slightly. Cause you usually have to overfill them to get them to seal i'll actually fix it when i get around front that's where the uh it's easier to just depress the uh, stem with the tool so that's how you do it okay got the air in it it's filled to 22 psi which is what it says to fill it to and now i'm going to put this side back on is no different than taking it off I made a joke on Instagram that we put mud tires on everything in Kentucky and that's not too far from the truth I don't actually remember if I tightened up the uh, valve sim seal, so I'm probably going to do that real quick. I know my battery's about dead. I'm only showing like 7%. So I'm probably going to fix that real quick. As soon as I tighten these up, I'm not sure what the... Just snugging these up initially to make sure that they're snug and the wheels centered. I'm not going to tighten them too tight. They probably have a recommended setting in the owner's manual. But I used to do mechanic work and I know about how tight is tight enough. I want to take this cap off and make sure I tighten down this because I don't know if I did or didn't. That is snugged up. This tire is good to go. And we do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to change batteries though. This time for real. So this side is just a repeat of the other side, but I'm going to record it just in case maybe there's something in that footage that don't turn out right. I'm <laughs> going
Yay! Let it down off the jacks. We should be ready to a spin. Man, it kind of looks like a, a battery-powered mud bog and mower. <laughs> Wing it as you go, Ed. A battery powered mud bogging mower. That sounds pretty cool. Oh, it looks tough now. Here's the two tires I took off of it. I'll add them with the uh, whole list of tires I've got in my building from all the other mowers and devices I've owned out here. <laughs> Let's take this thing for a ride. I got just the place to go see if these tires spin down this hill. When I get to the bottom. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you. There is nothing quite like an orb weaver spider. Orb we weaver spider huh. web <laughs> there is nothing like an orb weaver spider web to the face when you're on a ride mower so i would come right down here you could actually see about how far up i'd go and i'd go to turn here and this mower would just spin and do nothing it had no problems coming out of there and neither tire spun. Oh, I see it a little bit. Back up. Get it where you can see it. There's a little bit of torn grass right there, but I don't think it's from the tire spinning. May have been. Let's go try a bigger hill. Oh, more spider webs. <laughs> kind of down here was the same thing you can see all these spots bare spots where the tires get didn't turn one bit didn't spin at all I don't even know can you see what I see I bet you can't. No, you can't. Because what happens is when I push forward, for me to go, it lowers the camera down toward the ground. Anyways, we're at the bottom. You can kind of see I'm going uphill now. If this was level, it's about like this. But what happens when as soon as I push this forward, you're not going to be able to see. So we're down a hill. It's about a 400 foot drop from up there to down where I started at. Let's go back down where I started at. Because I think you missed part of that. So down here I was talking about. You can kind of see it up there. Them spots. Every time I'd get down here in this bottom. And go to turn that way. It would always spin out right here. Like. Think of like slalom racing where you're like going and you're spinning sideways in a curve. That's the way this curve was every time. Cause this is a steep hill. It don't look like it from on this mower, but let me see if I can get down here where you can see how steep this hill is. So right here's where it always spins. Didn't spin a bit. Now that's how far up it is, how uphill it is. You know, it's a 30% grade, and that's probably 100 foot. 
75 foot up to the house, maybe 100 foot, 30% grade. I don't know how many feet that drops. It drops quite a bit. But that's kind of what I was getting at, is it would just always spin out down here. It was dangerous. It's super dangerous, matter of fact. Because coming down these hills, this mower would pick up speed. And actually, I know another place we can go try. Right up by the house, because it always kind of stays damp there, is another place. Country yards, yes, they're really this rough. So right down through here, there's a bunch of places that's like bare where it will get stuck. It's actually not damp today. Surprised the hell out of me. Well, some fret I did. Going up these are kind of always fun every single time because what happens is you get up to a certain point and the front tires raise up off of the stand. There's nothing you can do about it except for go with it. Just like that, we are done. Yay, new tires are on.